Incoming transmission. Hi right, guys, welcome to a, another Peak Area Productions video response. I'm actually video responding to a message that was sent. It was a long message. Let's show you guys. Here we go. It's actually from a guy called uh, JSN Mud. Uh, I think that's how you want people to say it. But anyway, so pretty much you're coming through and you're You've you've got a Mac Pro basically. You want to know about the speed of a Mac Pro. The only reason is because you had it in 2007. Okay, so basically you have a HD camcorder now, right? And you do stuff like Final Cut Pro, and you do effects and rendering and all that sort of stuff. Cool, that's good. You do effects and that sort of stuff. Awesome. So you're asking me. Uh, I'm wondering if an 8 core 2.26 8 core oh actually you've got a 4 core I think you got it mixed up there um, yeah uh, there's only one 2.26 gigahertz and it's the uh, it's the Mac Pro 8 core that comes in that now alright as as from what I can see what you're actually wanting to do, you want to do heavy effects and that sort of stuff, alright, yeah, you need a Mac Pro, alright, if you want to do that type of stuff, you need a Mac Pro, obviously. Not not disputing that the iMac is not powerful enough to do this type of thing with the i7 and all, but it's, it's, it's not the computer you would actually use to do this sort of thing, um, you know, that's arguable, because, you know, there's people out there I know on YouTube that actually do this type of stuff and they use iMacs. So it's debatable, really. But yeah, the Mac Pro I'm guessing you're actually looking at is the base model 8 core. For all your stuff, I guess 2.26 may get away with it. But seriously though, um, even though Final Cut does have a multi-core edge to it I really wouldn't go for the bottom of the range 8 core actually if price is an option I think you're better off just going for a, a, a mid-range quad core uh, or the, actually the mid-range being the 2.93 gigahertz quad core which edges around the base model 8 core pricing you got a better clock speed and you'll be able to punch videos and render them out pretty uh, quick as well as you are limited to a few more cores, but as far as I know, even the latest Final Cut doesn't really, really push the whole 8-core, multi-core thing that I've seen in certain tests. It uses multi-cores, as far as I know, but it doesn't really, really push the whole 8-core concept. From what I've seen, you know, some of you guys may claim differently, like, you know, some of the audience that... What she's watch my videos know that what Final Cut can do. You know, I don't pretend to be an expert on Final Cut Pro, but from what I've seen in tests, I'm just saying that they it doesn't completely utilize the whole core aspect. If I were doing it, and if I was in your situation, it really depends on what you want to actually spend. That makes sense. See, I don't know what type of budget you have. I don't know what you're trying to, what what you want to spend. See, if you wanted, my recommendation. All right, my recommendation would actually be to get a mid-range eight core. It's a good priced item, and plus it gives you a little bit of power in that much. Being the Nahal processors, they have the ability to. Pretty much, if they use lose less cores, they pretty much double. Uh, well, they don't double, but they will increase about 200, 300 megahertz uh, over its clock speed when it reduces the amount of cores that it's using. The hard processors have the ability to do that, and um, pretty much even the you know anything 
your harm processor made basically. So you got your Xeon X5500s, X5550, X5500s, whatever, uh, and plus your i7s and i5. Oh well, not i5s because they're not really. We'll, we'll we'll go. That's debatable too. So I'm not going to go for the whole i5 debate at this point. But i7s, yes. So. I'm assuming you actually want to go for the 8-core because of benefits of the whole RAM schema of things. Uh, you can actually put more RAM in it. Uh, you can actually... Well... Yeah, that's... Oh, yeah, and the 8-core concept of things as well. But, yeah, that's pretty much all I can see in the whole expandability side of things in the Mac Pro. If you want more RAM, then obviously, yeah, the 8-core is a better job for you. But the 2.66 gigahertz... If you really want to go for something that that will do what you want it to do, and from the looks of things, you want to do some intense stuff, I really, really, really wouldn't go for the 2.66 GHz quad core. I've been through this debate before, and I do know that I have had the whole decision of whether to go for the bowler range or just to go... Uh, for another one or go for a quad core it was difficult at the point where I actually just said bugger this I'm just going for the mid-range a core because I don't need the 2.93 gigahertz because I don't do like stuff at you at a level of video editing that I don't know say something that you would do obviously because you're doing some effects you're doing high res stuff to the point where it's really pro level I just do video editing as like a hobby but so I'm like a novelist um, no I can't even say the word so screw that I'm moving on uh, so, novice that's it moving on all right so yeah uh, I would say have a look go to an Apple store if you have one near you they have Mac Pro set up usually it's always the base model 8 core that they have set up have a look at it. Knowing an Apple Store, you can have a play around with it. Do stuff in Final Cut, because they usually have it pre-installed in some Apple Store. I don't know if it's all Apple Stores, but most Apple Stores have them pre-installed, so you can just play around. Have a go. See how fast you can go with it. Do some things on it, because you just stay all day at an Apple Store and just do shit, and they just don't care, which is the brilliant thing about Apple Stores. So you give that a go. See if you can see if it's worth getting because the performance level between the 2.6 gigahertz and the uh, 2.6 kicks is considerable it is it doesn't look like massive jump but it is a massive jump in terms of professional stuff and plus a lot of your single core stuff will be pretty much quite good as well that's the other upside about it single core apps will run really really good as well Whereas when you get the 2.6 hicks, you sacrifice a little bit of that because of the multi, because you want more cores and less clock speed. I would say for what you want to do, go for the mid range. So uh, this is, is obviously the Australian Apple site, so the pricing will, will differ from where you're from. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. So pretty much, yeah, the 2.6 hicks, it is a substantial upgrade, obviously. It, because it's two processors, so it's two point two of the two point six six Xeons. But honestly, though, I would recommend that you wait a little bit longer. Because I reckon in a few months, from what I heard, the new Mac Pros will be out. Unless you really, really, really need a Mac Pro now, a new computer, then I would uh, consider going for the mid-range, obviously, eight core, and then just pile it up with heaps of RAM. Because if you're doing high-end HD 1080p quality and you're doing crap loads of video, you want to be able to have at least 12 gigs of RAM. Because seriously, video rendering, from what I've learned, chews up a ton of RAM. I would say, though, one of, probably the best thing to do would be just to wait. The new Mac Pro, new 6-core and so-called 12-core should actually be coming out this year. Whether or not it comes out in WWDC uh, 2010 will be entirely up to Apple, obviously. 
or if it just gets released secretly for some surprise relation. But I think it will be announced at WWDC because it looks like it's pointing at that stage. And let me just add another note. I hope they bloody come out with the damn 30-inch LED display I've been waiting for for so damn long. (sighs) Whatever. So anyway, yeah, I've I've been wanting to get a second 30-inch display for so long, it's not funny. So when Apple decides to bring out their LED, I'll be able to get one, and it'll be bloody awesome. So, that's my two cents on, I hope I answered questions and really covered a lot of things there for you, but that's pretty much what I think on that whole subject of things, so I hope that's a lot of help for you, and I hope you have a good time with whatever decision you make. Let me know how you go, cheers.